This video includes a paid sponsorship from Babbel, but I'll talk more about that later. Tesla is reportedly making two big changes to their cyber cells, their new 4680 batteries, which could lead to a 10% to 20% energy density increase. This could lead to not only a longer range cyber truck in the future, but could also pave the way for a long range 4680 equipped Model Y and a 4680 equipped Tesla Semi in the future. Follow along as I cover these details. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. According to Joe Tegmeyer, Tesla is making two big changes to their 4680 batteries that could drastically increase the energy density of the cells. First, Tesla is switching over to a more nickel-rich cathode chemistry, and they will be using a new electrode manufacturing technique referred to as asymmetric lamination. I will explain more about this shortly, but first, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Babbel. I took Spanish classes in high school and, while I learned enough to get a decent grade, I regret that I never became fluent in the language. Now as an adult, I know how valuable learning a second language like Spanish is. So when Babbel reached out to sponsor this video, I was very happy to say yes. I've been using the Babbel app on my phone and I'm already 13 lessons in, and it feels good to finally be taking a step towards learning Spanish once again. I love how interactive the Babbel program is and it's preparing me to have practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. Perdón, ¿tú hablas inglés? Perdón, ¿tú hablas inglés? And that means, pardon me, do you speak English? Aprendo español. Aprendo español. After using the Babbel app, I can definitely see why it's one of the top language learning apps in the world, and I definitely recommend that you give it a try. Babbel does have a few different subscription options to choose from, including self-study or live class subscription options, and they even offer a 20-day money-back guarantee. If you're ready to get started, you can get 60% off your Babbel subscription by clicking the link in the video description, and make sure to let me know in the comments section what language or languages you would like to learn. Tesla's second generation cyber cells, the 4680 batteries that are in the Tesla Cybertruck, did get a 10% energy density boost over the first generation 4680 battery cells. And that allows the Cybertruck to get a rated range over 300 miles. However, even if you choose to purchase the optional range extender and you add that to, for example, the most efficient all wheel drive version of the truck, that still doesn't quite get you to the 500 miles of range that was originally promised. And of course, that 500 mile range version was supposed to be for the tri-motor version of the truck. Now, in general, some may argue that 500 miles of range is not necessary, but it's quite different when it comes to a truck like the Cybertruck, because if you tow a heavy load or you have a heavy payload, your range goes down drastically under that load. So while you might start out with 500 miles of range when towing a trailer, that number can drop in half or more. So for long distance towing or carrying heavy payloads, you really need as much range as possible. So any range boost to the Cybertruck due to an increase in energy density of the battery cells is going to be huge in the future. And it looks like, based on what Joe Tegmeyer recently wrote about on X.com, that a range boost for the Cybertruck could be coming in the near future. With that being said, here's what Joe Tegmeyer revealed in this post on X.com. First of all, Joe revealed that Tesla is switching over right now to a more nickel rich cathode chemistry for their 4680 battery cells. As Joe wrote here, at the end of 2023, the cathode chemistry for Tesla's 4680 battery cells was an NMC811 chemistry. That means 80% nickel, 10% manganese, 10% cobalt. Apparently Tesla's new cathodes will have 90% nickel 5% manganese, and 5% cobalt. With Tesla increasing the percentage of nickel in their cathodes, the theoretical maximum energy density of the battery cell should improve. The reason I say theoretical here is because there's a lot more that influences the energy density of a battery cell than just the cathode chemistry, but the cathode chemistry is extremely important. And I believe this particular change will lead to a very substantial energy density increase. A good way to demonstrate the relationship between a higher percentage of nickel and a higher energy density 
really comes down to comparing various NMC battery cathode chemistries. In this article, the energy density of various cathode materials from the supplier Tar Gray are compared here, including the NMC333, 532, 622, and 811 chemistries. Interestingly enough, with 622, that capacity reaches around 175 milliamp hours per gram. However, when you move up to 811, which of course is a 20% increase in the amount of nickel, that number reaches 203.4 milliamp hours per gram. So with a 20% increase in nickel, that led to a 16% energy density increase there with the cathode materials. So if Tesla is indeed moving from an 811 to a 955, meaning they're increasing the nickel content by 10% and decreasing the manganese and cobalt content each by 5%, this makes it appear very likely that at least an 8% energy density increase could be achieved by this cathode chemistry change alone. Beyond the cathode chemistry change though, Joe did mention in this post something interesting called asymmetric lamination. Joe wrote, quote, they are also trialing asymmetric lamination with one side of the laminated material thicker than the other. The expectation is this will increase the amount of jelly roll that can fit into the 4680 can. The term asymmetric simply means not symmetric. And lamination refers to the process of adhering the active cathode or anode materials to their respective um, electrode foils. When it comes to manufacturing a cathode or an anode, the active material is laminated onto both sides of the foil. And I assume that this is traditionally done in a somewhat symmetrical fashion, meaning that both sides of that foil have a similar thickness, if not an exact thickness, to have a very symmetric and even design. Now, when it comes to how thick the electrodes are, that is something that battery manufacturers do tweak based on the end use of the cell. Thicker electrodes do lead to more energy dense battery cells because in the end, when you wrap those electrodes in to a can or a prismatic cell or whatever it be, a pouch, whatever that be, you end up with more active material and less foil, which is non-active. So the thicker electrodes can lead to a more energy dense battery cell. However, with thicker electrodes, that leads to a lower power density. So for a high performance application for fast charging or for fast discharge for a very fast vehicle. This of course is a very big downside. On the surface level, I don't see an obvious benefit to energy density with an asymmetric design with chemistry being equal, but I believe this is more related to a balance of power density and energy density. I believe this asymmetric lamination could refer back to a new multi-layer hybrid electro manufacturing process that was described in a previous Tesla patent application that I discussed in a previous video. As a reminder, if you haven't watched that video yet, this hybrid process included both a wet layer and a dry process layer in one electrode. And so it was a combination of those two technologies in one electrode. This is of course a very interesting design and it makes me think that there's a possibility that this asymmetric design could relate to one side of the electrode foil having a single normal dry process layer and the flip side of that electrode foil could have a multi-layer design. The benefits of this hybrid multi-layer electrode manufacturing approach include, quote, a reduced rise in equivalent series resistance, and quote, this can allow the device to have an increased power density over the life of the device. So with a higher power density and a lower equivalent series resistance, this should lead to faster charging and better discharge performance. So if this new asymmetric lamination does refer back to that, maybe it's a way to balance this new high nickel rich chemistry to kind of balance that out. Maybe it's necessary to improve the battery longevity and performance. We of course don't know for sure, but just piecing this together, it does seem to make a lot of sense and there does seem to be a connection here. When it comes to how much more energy dense these battery cells could be, Joe Tegmeyer goes on in this post, quote, with both of these changes, Tesla will be able to increase the capacity of the 4680 battery initially used in 2023 by a further range of between 10 to 20%. Now, once again, I don't know enough about asymmetric 
lamination to really uh, be sure on this, but it doesn't look like that asymmetric lamination will lead to an energy density increase, but more so a power density increase, or at least a balance of power density and energy density. Maybe this asymmetric lamination is something different than I'm thinking, and there is a way to increase the energy density with that process, but it appears like to get to that 20% number, that would require adding silicon to the anode or something like that. Beyond Tesla switching over to the 955 chemistry, it appears like they're also working on a new 973 chemistry that they could also switch over to in the future. And I assume this means that they would be dropping the amount of cobalt in the battery down to 3% and increasing the amount of manganese to 7%. Because of course, cobalt is extremely expensive and it is one of those materials that has some ethical concerns. So this could be a big deal. And I don't know if this would affect the energy density of the battery, but it would at the very least decrease the cost a little bit. And Tesla decreasing their dependence on cobalt would be a big deal. When it comes to when we might actually see these battery cells and when this transition is happening, Joe makes very clear in this post that the transition to NMC 955 is actually underway right now. However, anytime you make a change to the chemistry of a battery, um, it doesn't always go as smoothly as you might want. And so this may take a little bit of time to transition over. Joe did write here, quote, I believe that since this is essentially just a chemical composition change, the process to upgrade to the newer cells should happen relatively quickly with little to no drop in production using NMC 955. However, more realistically, as Jordan from The Limiting Factor wrote in this post on x.com, Quote, this may interfere with the production ramp and it may explain why Tesla appears to have been stockpiling battery cells from the current 4680 line in Texas. Transitioning from one chemistry to another can be very difficult. Small changes have big impacts. I believe Jordan's 100% correct here and I believe it will take a little bit of time for Tesla to really fully switch this over and get that running smoothly. And I also believe that Jordan is correct here that this is the reason why Tesla has been stockpiling 4680 battery cells. We know that they stopped manufacturing the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y quite some time ago. And since then, they still have been manufacturing 4680 batteries, but they haven't built really that many Cybertrucks just yet. So those cells apparently have been stacking up and preparing for this switchover. It was a very smart move by Tesla, and they really gave themselves a little bit of a runway here to get this all switched over. And hopefully, They'll have enough time with the supply of batteries that they have to switch over so the switchover will be seamless in the end because of their stockpile. So with that being said, I now want to move over and discuss how this 10 to 20% energy density increase could increase the Cybertruck's range and how this could pave the way for a long-range all-wheel drive Model Y equipped with 4680 batteries and a Tesla Semi with a range that matches the current amount of range of the Tesla Semi, all equipped with 4680 batteries. Here's a chart that I've used in past videos comparing the energy density of Tesla's first gen and second generation 4680 battery cells to their 2170 and 18650 cells. When it comes to the 4680 battery cells, previously I had gone with a 244 watt hours per kilogram estimate for the first generation 4680 battery cell from Tesla. And this number of course came from the limiting factor. However, a new research paper came out and this was shared by the limiting factor on x.com. And in this new research paper, which discussed a teardown of a first gen 4680 battery, the energy density estimate that that team came up with for the first gen 4680 battery cell was 232.5 watt hours per kilogram. This 232.5 watt hours per kilogram seems to make a lot more sense when you compare it to the rest of this data. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for my estimates this time. And we know, for example, once again, that the second generation 4680 battery cells are 10% more energy dense than the first generation cells. So they could have an energy density somewhere around 256 watt hours per kilogram. And if Tesla's third generation of 4680 battery cells with an NMC 955 chemistry get a very conservative 10% energy boost, that could increase the energy density at the cell level to around 282 watt hours per kilogram, which looks like it could be slightly better than the 18650 cells that are in the Tesla S and X. When equipped with all season tires, the tri-motor version of the Tesla Cybertruck is rated to get 320 miles of range and the dual motor version, 340 miles of range. If Tesla is able to increase the energy density of those battery cells by 10% and keep the same number of battery cells in that pack, 
That could increase the tri-motor version to 352 miles of range and the dual motor version to 374 miles of range. Even after just a 10% energy density boost, with that range extender, the dual motor all wheel drive version of the truck, if you get the all season tires, that rating could be very well over 500 miles of range. So while it wouldn't be the tri-motor version that Tesla promised, that at least would give it a 500 mile range option in the future potentially for the Cybertruck. In addition, even a 10% energy density increase with that 955 chemistry for the 4680 battery cells, that should allow Tesla, once they have enough battery cells, to release a 4680 equipped Tesla Model Y that has a long range. They could, for example, release a long range all wheel drive version of the Model Y with 4680 batteries. And I believe it still could have the same amount or maybe even slightly more range than the current version that's being sold right now with 2170 batteries. In addition, I believe this could also lead to them building a Tesla Semi with 4680 batteries and should at the very least allow the Tesla Semi to have the same amount of range that it does right now. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. A special shout out to one of my newest supporters, um, a performance supporter, Mr. Mister. Thank you for your support. And thank you to all the rest of you as well. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.